Welcome Sam's talk. Russell winds it, feeds it back across, Chuck in scores! Brady Kachuk makes it 2-0! Welcome to Sense Talk. My name is Brandon Plant and I am your host. Tonight, Ottawa took on the Toronto Maple Leafs in the Battle of Ontario. Always a spicy one when these two teams face off with one another. A little bit of a hint. Uh, as you can tell by the thumbnail, we have some things to talk about uh, that happened at the end of this one. But before we get to that point of the game, let's get into the entire recap and talk about everything from the beginning to the end and in between. But before we get to that, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has nominated us for five different awards at this year's Ottawa Awards for 2024. Last year we won Best YouTube Channel in Ottawa. Uh, obviously just getting nominated is a hell of an honor, but you know what? Once you're nominated, you might as well win. So if you wanted to vote for us, you can do so once a day for all five of those categories. I'll put a link to that portal to vote for us down below in the description and comment section down below below. Now let's get into tonight's recap. Like I already mentioned, Ottawa's taking on the Toronto Maple Leafs in their first game in 10 days. For some reason, I think the Ottawa Senators by far have the most lengthy breaks in between games this year. This is like the third or fourth time this year alone the Ottawa Senators have had a week break in between games. They have more than a week this time, 10 games. So early on for Toronto, let's just say they took advantage of that. Ottawa was just trying to catch up. But look, because they didn't play for a little bit the last week or so Ottawa now has five games in hand they are 17 points out but they do have five games in hand you win all those you run the table a little bit you never know am I delusional yes does that matter no because sports are supposed to be fun and Ottawa going to this game is 6-2-2 two two in their last 10 look at your screen right now we have a great graphic here from Jamie Dean one of our graphic designers on the Sense Talk team and look Ottawa's beaten some really impressive teams over the last 10 games so Toronto by no means is a team that Ottawa should take lightly. Obviously, there are a team that are in the playoffs. Not much playoff success, but nonetheless, a playoff team. So, you know, Ottawa has to take this game seriously. It's the Battle of Ontario in Ottawa. I have no doubt they will. They certainly did, I would say. Um, and by the way, Ottawa has won two out of the three matchups against Toronto this year. Going into this one, a couple of minor uh, lineup notes. Travis Hamnick would draw back into the lineup for the first time in five games. As Jake Sanderson is out with a lower body injury. Um, he might be skating earliest next week, which is good news. It's an undisclosed return uh, timetable for Jake Sanderson, and the fact that he's going to be back on the ice as early as next week is a great sign. Now, the last thing I'll mention is, look, there was no danger flutes at the beginning of this game. Cannot stand it. Cannot stand it. Ottawa Senators, if you're watching this, anyone in the organization, if you're watching this, bring back the danger flutes. We can't have it. Cannot have it. That is a certified banger. And I will not accept the danger flutes being gone. It's a tradition. It's sacrilege that it was gone to begin with for this one. Regardless of the result, bring it back. Now let's get into tonight's recap as Ottawa takes on the Leafs. To the first period we go, and as I already kind of alluded to, uh, Toronto would take advantage of a sloppy start by the Ottawa Senators early on. As Tim Stutzla turns it over, and the Ottawa Senators cannot recover. And guess what? The Leafs would take advantage of that. Austin Matthews with his 42nd of the year, pretty insane. Can't lie. Nice shot past Corpusalo to make it 1-0 Toronto. But Ottawa, they would start pushing after that, particularly in the second half of the first period of play. And they would get rewarded for their pushback. As G-Money, Claude Giroux, Puts it home past Martin Jones. The tie this one up at one apiece. This goal was all Claude Giroux. It was originally a two-on-one. Jones with an unreal stop. Game respect game. But no one picked up the loose puck and Claude Giroux cashed it home. As Ottawa goes into the first intermission. Tied with Toronto at 1-1. But Toronto certainly dominated the possession side of things in the first period of play. And Ottawa is certainly fortunate to escape. Tied at one. And we go to the second period of play. And what a play here. What a play. Shane Pinto. He is so, so good. My friend, Shane Pinto has been dynamite. Has been unstoppable. He's been on fire since returning after his, uh, well, let's just say interesting suspension. And Ottawa here is so happy to have Shane Pinto back. As guess what? A nice chip pass from Shane Pinto as he identifies Vladimir Tarasenko, who himself 
identified the open lane with a burst of speed. Pinto sees him going through, chips it up to Vladdy T, and Terra Sancho puts it home to Senators lead. 2-1, Vladdy T. Vladimir Tarasenko extend this man right now as Ottawa takes the lead. It's 2-1 Senators. What a goal from Vladimir Tarasenko. A nice pass from Shane Pinto as well. Great awareness, no doubt. But more so, great awareness from Vladimir Tarasenko in this goal. In the neutral zone, turns on the Jets, finds that open lane, sees it before anyone can even recover on the Leafs, and takes advantage and gives Ottawa their first lead of the night. But this lead would be short-lived as unfortunately seven minutes later, the Leafs would strike the tie at two apiece. Nyes out front, not boxed out by Chikorin. A beautiful tip past Corpusalo. No chance for him as the Leafs would even it at two apiece. But unfortunately for the Leafs and fortunately for the Ottawa Senators, that lead would evaporate as Shane Pinto, pinner, cannot be stopped. 3-2 Ottawa, Shane Pinto gets his first goal at home with a great tip out front off a of Parker Kelly shot. It's 3-2 Senators. Shane Pinto now has six points in his last seven games. Unbelievable start to Shane Pinto's year. Gives Ottawa the one goal lead right back. And then four minutes later, Josh Norris has not scored a goal in 15 straight games since December 23rd. That ends now, Josh Norris, the noof, roofs it past Martin Jones on an assist from Drake Batherson. An unreal goal here from Josh Norris, threading his way through the defenders of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And the Ottawa Senators go into the second intermission, up by two. It's 4-2 Senators. What a second period for the Ottawa Senators. And under Jacques Martin, the second period of play has suddenly become a bright spot for the Ottawa Senators. There's been multiple times this year where they've really put on an offensive onslaught against the opposing team in the second period of play. That happened again tonight. What a second period and what a response after a bit of an iffy first period of play. So let's go to the third period of play because I want to talk about something that happened at the end of this game. As I'm sure many of you guys want to hear what I have to say. Probably some of you Leaf fans watching this are probably clicking on this video just for that conversation. So look, the Leafs would score in about the first five minutes of the third period of play. Max Domi, nice pass. Um, you know, you have Brandstrom and Hamnick just standing around. Batherson doesn't cover his man. Stutzla high at the point. Just a total defensive breakdown. Domi takes advantage. The Leafs will cut the lead to one. It's 4-3. But uh, let's skip. Let's skip through the rest of the game. Look, Ottawa, we already know what happens. We're going to win this one with six seconds left. Really, Greg has a breakaway. Uh, Shane Pinto essentially just launches that puck. No one's really Greg. He has a no-doubt empty net goal to seal this game. And he does a bit of a cheeky thing. He slaps it home. 5-3 is the Sens win. But look. Um, look at your screen right now. That goal goes in and Morgan Riley immediately skates right over to Ridley Gregg and cross-checks him in the face. A dangerous cross-check. Throw the book at this guy. What an absurd, absurd thing to do if you're Morgan Riley. I don't give a damn if you think it's classless what Ridley Gregg did. Who cares? If you don't like what he did and you don't like the fact he slapped that puck into the net, into the empty net, I might say, you think it's classless, well, guess what? You don't like it? Don't put yourself in a position where you have to empty the net to begin with. If the Ottawa Senators win this game, which they did, which they did, and they have the chance to score, which Greg did, you can't complain about giving up the goal. I don't care if you consider it classless or not. That is not an excuse to cross-check a guy to the head, basically, not basically, literally assaulting him with no means, no reason to assault him. They assault him. Morgan Riley should get suspended, no doubt, five-plus games. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous play. Cannot have it in the National Hockey League. And let me say this. If Ridley Gregg did this to Morgan Riley, if he slapped it into our empty net, I'd be saying the same damn thing. I always say this. If you win the game, you have the right to win how you want to win, okay? And more importantly, there's no rules. There's no rules saying how you can or cannot score an empty net goal. End of story. End of story. If you don't like how he scored the empty net goal, don't put yourself in position where you have to put the empty net to begin with. It's sickening that Sportsnet and essentially all their analysts supported Morgan Riley and they were happy that Morgan Riley went over to really Greg and potentially could have really hurt him, concussed him, and concussions are not something to joke around about, right? So, you know, I cannot believe that the Sportsnet panel and the analysts during the broadcast were supportive of Morgan Riley and defended him and said that really Greg was in the wrong. Was it a little cheeky? Yes. Was it a little, you know, pesky, you know, a little pesty, you know, a little uh, rat-like? 
Sure. Does that mean, is that justification to assault the guy with a cross check to the head? No. No, you're so salty about it. You don't like the fact that we scored the empty net goal. Don't put yourself in a position where you got to empty the net to begin with. If you don't like it, win the game. Otherwise, shut your mouth and cry somewhere else. It's sickening that Sportsnet defended it. It's sickening that that even happened. And I hope Morgan Riley gets a multiple game suspension because you just cannot. You cannot have that in the National Hockey League. Head hits are so, so serious. It can derail a career, but more importantly, it can derail somebody's life. You cannot have it. That cannot be allowed in the National Hockey League. I'm very interested to see how the National Hockey League uh, moves forward with this. There's no way he avoids the suspension, in, in my opinion. It's more so about how many games he does ultimately get suspended. But luckily for Ottawa, they do get the win. 5-3 over the Leafs. They now have won 3 out of 4 against Toronto this year. They improved to 7-2-2 two, and two. in their last 11 games as well. As the owners' Corpus Allo as well improves to 3-1-2 and two in his last 6 games. Much better as of late for sure as the Senator goaltender. As Ottawa as well, you know, overall on the record on the season, improves to 21-25-2 and two on the year. Now as I kind of mentioned, Jonas Corpus Allo, he had a solid night tonight. 9-12 save percentage. Uh, he allowed uh, 3 goals on 34 shots for 31 saves. Um, but, you know, another impressive performance tonight was Claude Giroux. Three shots in goal with that goal as well. Um, not the biggest stat sheet night for him, but the way he leads his team in every single game deserves the shout-out for sure. Claude Giroux, this guy's 36 years old. He looks like he's in the first year in the National Hockey League. And by that, I mean he's so quick, he's so elite, and he has no signs of slowing down anytime soon. Shane Pinto, I also thought was impressive tonight with three points, including a goal. Uh, as well, he had five shots on goal in just over 20 minutes of ice time with a hit and a block as well. He took a key face off in the final 90 seconds there when the Leafs had the empty net. So Jacques Martin clearly trusts Shane Pinto. And it makes sense. This guy is on a heater right now. And he has one of the best face-off percentages in his career in the National Hockey League, right? So uh, it's great to see Pinto getting opportunities like that uh, and getting the trust of the coaching staff and, of course, management who desperately wanted to sign this guy, and I see why. Because this guy's going to command quite a bit of money, mark my words. Now, really, Greg, uh, a goal tonight, of course. Two shots and goal, one block, 19 minutes of ice time. What a pest this guy is. I love this guy. This is the exact type of guy that you want to have on your team, but you don't want to face on the opposing team. So, for really, Greg, um, just love it. This is such sicko energy. Um, and you know what? Once again, if you don't like the goal... Don't put yourself in a position where the goal goes in to begin with. I'm sorry. Okay? If you don't like it, don't put yourself in a position like that. End of story. Um, he scored a goal. There's no rules on how to score a goal. And look, I mean, thank God. Thank goodness that really Gray got up. He's okay. No concussion. Nothing like that. But it's a rock star move by really Gregg. Can't lie with you. But Morgan Riley's a scumbag. I mean, you know what? It's a little cheeky. Sure. But I mean, does that mean you got to attack this guy and potentially you know, derail his life by attacking his head? I don't think so. I don't think so. If you're so salty about losing, talk to your teammates about playing better so you get the win. End of story. But besides that, let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below. Hockey Twitter, sense Twitter, Leafs Twitter. Twitter right now is absolutely going insane. Uh, so I can only imagine all you guys watching this right now have a lot of takes. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below as always. And uh, what a game. I mean, my goodness. This game had everything. Thank goodness the Senators held on for the victory. Uh, but yeah, let me know once again what you guys think down below about the Ridley Greg Morgan Riley incident. I think Riley should get five plus games, um, you know, in terms of a suspension and, uh, we'll see what happens. By the way, shout out to my San Francisco 49ers tomorrow. We're playing the Super Bowl against Kansas City, looking for a bit of redemption. So hopefully when Ottawa plays again on Tuesday against Columbus, you'll be seeing me in my 49ers gear with a big smile on my face. But besides that, thank you all for watching. See you all in the next one. Go Sens Go.